everyone, Christine Ann here. Um, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I appreciate you clicking on the thumbnail to join me today. What I wanted to talk about today was something that I have referred to in a number of my other videos, which is the fact that I am using eyeshadow in my art making. So what I thought I would do today is show you um, how I am using the eyeshadows, how I store them, how I have them organized, and I'll show you a few examples of some paintings that I'm working on. These are small paintings um, that I'm experimenting with right now. I'm trying to learn how to use the eyeshadows. Um, they're a little tricky for a number of reasons that we can talk about, but I thought it would be fun to um, show you something different and um, a little bit of my process and what I am doing. So let me um, get the camera set up over my um, table and I'll take you through some examples. Okay, so now we are sitting here at my, um, my table that I use. This is my old um, dining room table from my last apartment. It's really small. It, it really only seats four people, and since it's only the three of us in my family, it was um, more than adequate and then it made sense when I needed a table to use this one. Um, it's actually perfect for making art. It's really sturdy. Um, all of this paint actually, if I took the time to do it, would come off. But also it's just so many happy memories at this table, you know, meals with friends and family and whatnot. So I, I like it as well for that reason. But um, I am a, um, I'm a, I'm a messy artist. Um, I like to make a mess. That's part of my process. And one of the things I do is that, um, to try to keep things a little bit under control is I put down these wee wee pads. Um, I bought the wrong size one time. Uh, these are too small, but they're perfect for just kind of laying out a nice clean, um, table uh, or surface for for when I'm working so okay let's start I'm going to um, take the eyeshadows out of the pans in this palette this is the purple rain palette from C color um, in my last video I showed how um, I actually got the actual bloodlust palette from Jeffree Star which this one is a dupe of um, so what I'm going to do um, instead is take the colors out of this and um, use it in my painting. So the way I do that is, um, let me look here. Okay, I really like to use chopsticks whenever we get Chinese food or delivery. Um, we always uh, save the chopsticks because I like to use those. So, for example, here, um, I'm going to take out these purples. I don't necessarily differentiate between shimmer or matte for this purpose. I actually like mixing them together. Um, and since in here, you know, this purple, um, it's kind of light. Um, maybe even this blue. I don't know how I'll mix them together. But anyway, let me just show you as an example of what I do. It's actually, it's kind of satisfying, right? So I just go like that. I um, kind of there, there we go. So now the pan is empty. And I have the eyeshadow in there. Um, let's do this green one now. I'm also not concerning myself if the chopstick has, you know, one color on it because the, the very last thing I want to be is exact or precise about any of the colors. I think the more there's mixing, the better. Um, I can probably do something like mix these two shades together, right? So let's do that. So this one is Kingdom. Yeah, let me move these aside. 
Um, I have figured out by doing this, it helps to do the ones on the edges first and then work your way towards the middle. Um, and as you might imagine, this can get very messy very quickly. Um, let's see. I think this one also, it's more of a pink, but once it's ultimately in there together. Okay. What else did we say? We're going to take, I think, this one. It's very, it's very satisfying to destroy <laughs> things. Um, okay, so that one goes in there, and then that is what it looks like. Okay. And then what I might do with, um, I have other chopsticks that have, you know, a flat end compared to this. I might um, pulverize it a little bit to make it a little more powdery, but I, I honestly like it when it's a little chunky like this. Because um, I could always smooth it out, but once you smooth it out, you can't make it chunky again, if that makes sense. Once I've done that, I then, you know, start... Um, combining all of the shadows that I'm pulling out. So I have all of these containers again um, from, you know, I clean them out from when you get Chinese food or takeout or something. So this is multiple different palettes where there was a red shade. You see there's some shimmer in it. Um, there's a lot of mattes. Some of them are a little darker, a little lighter, um, but that is what they look like once they're all taken out. So I won't show you every one. I have about 36 different vials here, but here's some blue. Um, here is some green that's really pretty and here is uh, some of the purple that I just took out from the purple rain palette it ended up in here okay so that's um, how I get the shadows out and how they end up um, organized so I have a box here from Sephora and this is where I have all my shadows um, organized by um, color, etc. Okay, what I have here is an example of a board that I just am putting lots of layers of paint on. This is um, the back of it. You see, I've been working on this one a while. It's, um, it's pretty messy. Like I said, I tend to be messy but this is um, a painting where I had put um, a lot of blue and then you see there's eyeshadow kind of sprinkled all over it and this is what I mean also an example of um, trying to figure out how to use the shadow because if you sprinkle the shadow on and then try to do something else it all smears and there might be instances where I want to, you know, keep what looks like a little spot that's shattered or something. So um, that is part of the process. So what I did with this one was I put a layer of, it's called gloss, it's just basically acrylic paint without color in it. Um, when that was tacky, I sprinkled the shadow on and then I took it outside and I sprayed it with spray varnish just to kind of hold it there. And then, um, you know, then I can go back over it with other things. But it, it's, it gets to be pretty delicate um, at times. But this is an example of by trial and error, I'll figure out, you know, what I like about it, what I don't. Um, this was just literally using any shadow. Um, I don't think this is very pretty right now, but, you know, uh, the, the background um, will eventually show through with something else. I don't know what will be on top, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's another one. Um, ugly. Work in progress. Um, but... 
uh, see shadow just sprinkled all over it. Um, this was something I was checking to see if it was okay and you know it wasn't the shadow was just coming off on my finger but that's okay. That's okay. I'm learning. So I have these little boards and these look like what I just showed you. Right? So you can see from the surface they're uneven. Um, they have layers and layers of paint on them. This is the edge. I usually tape the edges so that when I'm eventually done with the painting and I like it, I take the paint off and I can kind of cut off this layer of extra paint here and clean it up. But for right now, um, it's, it's covered. It's taped. And I just, um, this was my, this is my palette paper from yesterday. So I started out with some white and then I just kept adding different colors of blue or yellow and uh, that's how we ended up with all of these that you see they're all kind of related. Um, you know this is kind of a yucky putty color. This one's the same thing a little more yellow. This one I probably put some blue into. This one has some blue. You might see a little hint of some yellow under it. So. So I took the, the panels that had a lot of paint on it and eyeshadow sprinkled all over it or what I've done in some instances is take the shadow and um, smear it on. I'll show, what, I'll show you what I mean. Like, so we have this one here. Um, you know, so I might have taken shadows and done something like, like that, you know whatever I don't know just playing around um, and then I covered them up with the paint and one of the things I really love to do is to use my uh, power sander this is one of my favorite tools that I use all the time and so here's three more of these boards but what they look like after they've been sanded back so all of those layers of color um, start to come through, but they come through in these really interesting random patterns. You can never paint this. It's just too, um, it's just too random. That's what I love about it. But if you look closely, there is some of eyeshadow, and that's actually some Pat McGrath right there. So you might recall in um, one of my prior videos when I was talking about it, it was my third declutter when I figured out that I had three Pat McGrath motherships, uh, <laughs> number four. Um, one of them was all messed up so I actually used it. I took out all the eyeshadow and I um, used it on these boards to try to figure out how to use the eyeshadow. So there's all that glimmery there if you see it that's eyeshadow kind of surrounding that green um so let me show you let's see this one this one's this one's uh this one's interesting um I, I like the patterns that are coming out of this. And because I put so many layers of paint on, I don't necessarily remember. So when I am sanding back, it's actually kind of fun because things show up and, and, and I didn't even remember putting that color down. I certainly don't remember putting this kind of neon orange. Um, but all of a sudden in this background, it's, it's kind of interesting. So it's still a work in progress, but you know, look right there. It's one of my favorite spots right there. That's, that's eyeshadow. So that's like the shimmer that's coming through. So I just love that kind of added dimension that you get from the shimmery eyeshadow mixed in with the paint, um, in these really interesting kind of shapes and patterns that you will never... Um, get if you try to do it up front by painting this. Here's a third one. Um, right now it's still looking a little too Christmassy to me, but again, with all this red, if you see those outlines, that's all the eyeshadow where it was kind of smeared on. 
So I'm going to show you now uh, an example of one of these boards. I'm going to use my power sander and I am going to actually sand them. You can see what that looks like when it gets sanded back. It's, it's really fun. So all of these boards have eyeshadow either sprinkled or smeared with my finger or something else on them and it's pretty much all um, my, uh, let me get it out for you. It's pretty much all this mothership that I emptied out onto all of these boards. And I'm actually thinking of doing something with this palette as some sort of piece of art on its own. I haven't decided yet, but I might put my own things in each pan. Um, something that has to be funny or tongue-in-cheek or something. I don't know. I'm um, thinking about that. But let me show you what it looks like when I sand these back. See how that went from that solid blue to all of a sudden this. There was clearly a lot of red under it. Um, I clearly was using this neon orange paint for something. Um, and sometimes what I do is if I'm just trying to get rid of um, some old paint or if the tube is dried out, whatever's left, I will take and I would just smear it on boards just so you can get some interest in the background. Um, Sometimes it gives you an idea. Sometimes, you know, that spot could end up inspiring the entire painting um, and how I work on everything else. Um, this edge is kind of cool here, you know, with all these colors. But uh, let me do another board. Let's see what else we can find. This is my favorite part of, of um, making these kinds of paintings. <laughs> my cut proof glove um, got to be safe <laughs> Um, here, here's all the boards. Put my sander aside. Here's the boards. Um, you know, when you do this, you can see how different they all look. And there's this one here. One of my favorite things with this is I... I throw all different colors on. You never know what you're going to find. You never know what's going to show up that you're suddenly inspired by. So anybody watching this, um, you might have one that 
appeals to you um, because of a particular color scheme or something, you might think they're all hideous. That's fine. That's arts. Um, I can tell you for me, the ones that are looking the most interesting are this one because I really like how I really like this and how the orange is actually emerging here. Sometimes if I want to be very specific, I will take sandpaper, spray a little water, and I can sand back and follow that orange line through. And then, you know, you never know when to stop. Um, but if you do a little bit too much and you think you took away what was interesting, you could always paint that part back, right? You can't do this whole thing. Um, it's just too random and irregular, and, and that's what I'm going for. Um, but, you know, there's kind of like this splotch here. Some paint might have spilled. You know, this one, I might sand it back a little more or something, but this one I think is uh, interesting. I'm not even sure where the eyeshadow is on this one because I tried it all different ways. Um, this one, I can tell as I was sanding it back, had a lot of eyeshadow on it because the paint was coming off in a way differently from the other ones. This one, I can tell, has quite a bit of eyeshadow that was smeared on it. Um, these colors are interesting, but it's still kind of... There, there's something missing, I have to see. There's a hint of something right there that's a little light, so I bet this one's sanding a little more might reveal something. Based on the edge, I know there's yellow under there. So um, I'll keep going with that one. And this one, I think, is interesting. Um, I like this really desaturated green color adjacent to the red and this magenta. It's, it's really pretty, so I have to see. But that is... Um, yeah, of all of these, this one's probably my favorite so far. And what I will do is oftentimes with these, I will sand back some more. If I end up not liking it, I would start putting layers of paint on it again and do the same thing all over. Um, I often like to put collage in my work. Um, so that entails taking pieces of paper or some other material and gluing it on, and then I paint it over, sand back from that. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm doing. I still have other ideas with the eyeshadow, um, a lot of ideas. I actually keep a journal, and I'm writing down ideas nonstop, but... At very least, by doing this, sometimes when I do it, I just simply see a color combination that inspires me that I'll do in another painting. I might see, um, you know, a particular pattern. Um, for example, in this one, what appeals to me is this is all random and crazy looking, but you have this straight line right here. And so I love that comparison of this straight line that's clearly intentional. Um, I think I had a piece of tape that I put on this and I painted and I took the tape off and then this is all random. And here you see how as I'm sanding this random part is coming into the green that was intentional. So yeah, those are my boards. That is what I'm doing right now with the eyeshadow. Um, let me know if you um, like this kind of content. Let me know if you'd like to just see more videos in general of painting with or without eyeshadow. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And um, I will keep you posted and see you in a future videos. Um, Remember to be safe. Don't do this at home um, without um, proper tools and safety. Um, I should have done that right up front. Uh, but anyway, I hope that answers some questions about where is the eyeshadow going. And I will um, see you again soon in another video.